if we don't make a stand somewhere, the world will never change. Lah. But I also warn them that if you want to take, make a stand, there's a cost. The uh, executive in residence role that I'm playing is actually to share with the students my failures or the challenges in my life. My objective or intent and hope is really to raise awareness. In other words, you come to university to study, it cannot be just about books or grades. We need Asian challenges, uh, champions, uh, and this must come from our future leaders from the MBA cohort and so on. People who see their, their role as not just being earning huge sums of money and then going and buying huge cars. In the three years I taught in the business school, one subject I was asked to teach was business ethics. And bear in mind, in those years, there were very few books textbooks, you know. Some of my colleagues uh, joked with me, laughed at me. And they said to me, Sujin, this subject you actually cannot be taught. Because in Asia, if you insist on being ethical, you will have no business. But my, my challenge to the students is if you don't start, the society that we live in will get more and more corrupt. And in the end, who suffers? If we don't make a stand somewhere, the world will never change. But I also warn them that if you want to take, make a stand, there's a cost. I have no doubt that it's going to be very tough. When it, it affects your rice bowl, you might be asked to leave, you might be given you know, immediate 24-hour notice to go. I believe that if in small things you can't do what is right, I think when it comes to very, very big things, it's very hard for us to, to uh, do the right things. So the honing of our conscience, for instance, the danger is that you know, our conscience is uh, wiped smooth. That means we eventually have no conscience. Is when we keep on giving reasons or excuses as to why I mustn't do what is right. If you then say, when I'm CEO, I will do it, I can guarantee that they will not do it. Over the years, we develop as search consultants some skill. Maybe because we do it every day. We're not perfect. Sometimes we can have wool pulled over our eyes. But in a search process, when you try and blend experience with potential of what they call talent, that experience verifies your reading of the man, right? Uh, a person's career progression gives you an indication of how he will progress in the future. You can determine what the person is like and his reputation, our reputation usually precedes us. And over the years, I've looked at uh, the qualities of successful leaders. I think we can distill it down to about six. Uh, the first, I think, is passion. A person must be very passionate with a will to achieve. The second one is actually energy of persistence. That means that you have the energy to work very hard, but persistence in the sense that if, if you're knocked down, you get up again. The third one is intellect. But, you know, while a degree is some indication of intelligence, we also realize that people with intellect are not necessarily de degree holders. The fourth and fifth are the two distinguishing factors. Like one is what I call charisma. In a negotiation table, you will know who is the one with the charisma because you can see the person's uh, performance and behaviour. The fifth one is what we call decisiveness. You don't, you don't sort of uh, keep on lingering on making decisions. You make a choice on, on uh, the basis of analysis. But underlying all that, I believe, is the need to have a leader who has integrity, uh, values. Lah. And I think those are the, the, the six key points that, uh, that you find in almost every successful leader. Adversity brings out in the leaders that we, we have, they either respond uh, in a good way or in a bad way. If they're a good leader, 
they will need to be flexible, they will need to be persistent. In good times when you have unlimited resources, it's very easy to achieve what you, you are asked to do. But when you are in bad times, you have less, uh, fewer resources, it's so much harder to, to achieve the same thing. In difficult times, I think you have to deal with ambiguity. Things are not clear, things cannot be said. You know, what's the plan for tomorrow? And in that process then, you require a leader who must be able to inspire people to do more than what they usually do. You require a person who is more persistent, who is not uh, afraid of failure in that sense. We can't stop the flow of uh, the change from X uh, generation to Y generation. The present leaders are older generation. And of course, most times I hear them bemoan the fact that in my time, people don't work like that. Why generations, as I understand, are people who have shorter outlook. By and large, they don't worry about tomorrow. By and large, they want more money. They want to do less for more. They also want instant gratification. Managing this group of Y generation will be a new challenge for our managers. But having said that, of course, there are some things that don't change, you know. And we need to remind our Y generationers that there are some things that, that are very va valuable and precious that don't change. And they need to be reminded that, you know, like for instance, uh, integrity, honesty, give a full day's work for a full day's pay. So my hope to the new generation of uh, leaders, I'm calling for leaders to become leaders of captains of industry, to be captains of righteousness. Do the right thing.